Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we have a six state whiskey store haul for you folks at home. Run that video. All right, then, folks. Thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel. It really lets us know that you're really enjoying the content out there and that's something that's really meaningful to me and why I do these videos. So thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't, please consider doing it. And also don't forget to like the video. That also helps the channel grow and the community. And again, we appreciate that too. So we have a six state whiskey store hall, folks. So let's just dive straight into this. So I did a bit of whiskey hunting when we went out to California. We drove out there and we stopped by way of Phoenix. And uh, then we came back and then we hit up a couple of different states there as well. Honestly, I must, hit, I must hit up like 25 liquor stores, maybe more. It's not always possible to buy alcohol at every store when you're whiskey hunting. It's just not plausible. Uh, you'll end up spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I do spend some stuff if I can and it's something that I can have already don't have. And also buy some like sours and some interesting craft beer as well because I like that too. However, like I said, it's not always possible. So I try to do put my best foot forward and get some stuff I don't already have. So let's look at some of the whiskeys I was able to kill off since the last whiskey store whole video so first up we managed to kill off a high west double rye and this is going to be the maple syrup bubble double rye this was a really cool bottle because it was aged for four years and four months in a maple syrup barrel which is awesome I paid msrp first around 50 dollars really awesome bottle of whiskey it was super sweet as well so very dessert type whiskey there as well uh i don't do I have another one? I may have another one of these. I, I think I do have a backup for this. Uh, so I'm pretty set there for a little while. I don't think we'll see these maple barrel finishes again, at least in Colorado anyway. Maybe they might have pop up nationwide, but if you can find one of these, definitely get them because what's really good about it as well, it's quite decently ABV wise. It's got a decent ABV, it's 52.5%. I know some of the other ones are normally below 50. So this was a real hitter. So if you can find the maple finish ones, definitely get them. Next up, we have Knob Creek 9 here, but this is the single barrel reserve. So when I was in Kentucky, I believe it was last year, uh, I went to the Jim Beam uh, distillery and I picked up one of these from there. So they was picked off by Jim Beam. Coming in at 60% ABV or 120 proof. I, this is at MSRP and this was phenomenal. This was this is the third Knob Creek uh, single barrel pick that I've had and this one was definitely the best. It wasn't too spicy. It wasn't peanut forward as, at all. It had some, it was really Really nice and sweet it has a beautiful oak backbone to it as well and again it drunk so well and so easy for a 60 percent abv bowl pretty sad to see that one go and then lastly um i picked up some of these jack daniels distillery series you might have seen them in an old store a whole video this one is the straight tennessee rye whiskey finishing high toast maple barrels little bit of a theme here with the maple this was 101 proof this was awesome this was phenomenal i didn't do a review on it because it wasn't a nationwide release but this was excellent if you can pick up the distillery series ones not the ones that we had before they're like the smaller ones like the red wine and the jamaican all spice they're not very good but if you can pick up some of the distillery series definitely get them because they are fantastic so let's dive into some of these bottles then folks so first up and i got this from arizona because they don't sell it out here in colorado and that is very old barton so i don't i didn't take any whiskey with me so I was hoping to find something on the road that I can crack. <laughs> this was like the first, it took me ages. I didn't find really anything in New Mexico. I didn't stop in South Colorado. And so it was only until we got to Phoenix that I was able to pick this guy up. Uh, I paid $18.99. It's okay. As you can see, I've drunk a lot of it and I'll probably do a review on it as well. Uh, it was okay. It's, it was quite hot to begin with, but then it kind of opened up. It's not too bad for a budget bourbon, very old button. Can't go wrong for $19. So that was the first ball here. Next up in Tucson, Arizona, we went down there as well. Uh, I managed to pick up a bit of a backup here, John J. Bowman Port Barrel Finish. These seldom come to Colorado, so I've been meaning to pick a backup for, up for a while here. This was, like I said, 40, no, $42 even, this guy was. Uh, if you haven't tried any John J. Bowman, you need to stop that right now and try any of the Bowman's that you can get your hands on. The small batch will be easy enough to find, so definitely get that. I think that's quite comparable to Buffalo Trace. However, we got the Port Barrel finished one, and I'm really excited to get into this guy and see what this one is all about there. Next up, uh, and this is a pair of whiskeys. 
So whilst I was coming back through to, into Colorado, I was out in Grand Junction. If there's any of you folks out there who live in and around the Grand Junction area, message me on social media or email on the links down below. And I'll give you a recommendation of a really good shop out there who had a lot of stuff at MSRP and some allocated stuff that was a little bit higher, not as high as some of the crazy prices on secondary for some of the highly allocated stuff but still decently priced but these are the ones I got and these were just sitting on the shelf and that is the pair of Redwood Empire cast strengths so I had the pipe dream already so I was really looking for these guys and I paid MSRP $79.99 so I got the uh, Lost Monarch which is a blend of straight whiskies and then I also got the Emerald Giant cast strength which is the rye whiskies so now we have the complete set we'll do a review on these three and I'm so excited to get these bottles and these are not the last Redwood Empires you'll see on this store hall so MSRP couldn't go wrong there and at the same store I bought those I bought these two and it's another pair of whiskies it's all granddad 114 these just you just can't find them in and around Denver or the front range so I was looking for them the whole trip couldn't find them couldn't find them couldn't find them and then the same store, I got those guys at the Sonoma uh, Redwood Castrants. I found these guys. He had a bunch of these, but I only wanted to get two. I wanted to get one to open another one. I had a backup one as well. I paid $29.99. I think that, mm, I'm not sure what the MSRP is on these, but I think that might be a little bit high. But in Colorado, whiskey is generally just priced up just a little bit higher than MSRP as well. So yeah, Old Grandad, 114 proof, 50% ABV, has a bit of a cult following with this whiskey. So now I have these, I have the Old Grandad bonded, and I'm just gonna get the Old Grandad strict whiskey there as well, and we'll do a review and see how good is Old Grandad. Because like I said, these guys have a cult following, so we'll see if they stand up to to that here shortly. So I was to pair of all granddad's 114s. Next up, and uh, little, what's become a bit of a motto on this channel is if you see a Buffalo Trace single barrel, you pick her up. So this is out of total beverage here in Colorado. This is barrel number 14. They had a drop here lately and I paid $29.99. That's a little bit higher than what the, the single barrels are usually marked up. But I know for a lot of you folks out there, these are impossible to find, so that must be a really good price there. But this again was the one of the single barrel ones, some of the best value for money in bourbon. Uh, uh, ABV on this guy is just the standard, nothing special that they do. I think it's 45% ABV or 90 proof. I don't know, yeah, 45% ABV, 90 proof, proof. I have a couple of these guys. I just love, I think these are fast becoming my daily drinkers, just because there's subtle differences between each one because obviously it's a single barrel. So if you're able to get one of these, don't sleep on them, get it 100%. That was Buffalo Trace, single barrel, store pick. So while I was in California, there I was, spent, I was in and around LA, and we spent some time in San Diego as well, and the city of San Diego was awful for whiskey hunting. Everything was just marked up, and every shop seemed the same and had the same stuff. That was the same in like LA proper as well, but when you got out of LA and into the foothills and stuff, you could really do some really good whiskey hunting out there. And there was a city, and I, I think it was Lancaster, I want to say it was called, and some of the stores out there had some quite old stuff that I guess had just been sitting on the shelf. And these bottles attribute to that as well. So I got two Elijah Craig barrel proofs out there. These were about $70, so nothing special in the price. However, the good thing is about this is this one, or this one on the right, this was B5, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B520. So this was from three years ago, and this was the C920. So they just had them sitting on the shelf. There's a couple there, uh, but I only wanted to get these two, which is just insane because they shouldn't be sitting on shelves anymore. They, it's, they, uh, the barrel proofs have moved on so much, I guess, that these have considered some of the older ones, but they had some sitting on the shelf. So I got one of each. I also got another one of the B520 for a friend as well who loves this edition. So I have this one up on the shelf. I have this one up on the shelf, and now I've got two awesome backups. Like I said, I paid $70 for them, which is a killer deal for this guy. Um, and, and these two batches are known to probably be the best batches in the last, say, like, four or five years, arguably. I know the, A, the A919, I think it was, was also a very good batch as well. However, I got the B520 and the C920, very happy to get them at the MSRP, because I thought they were just lost to the world at this point. So, that was those two. And again, like I said, I think it was in a place called Lancaster, outside northeast of LA, only like a 45 an hour drive. But that was a really good city as a whole uh, to do some whiskey hunting there too. Uh, 
because I also found on these the other two red ones we were talking about I found these guys there uh, I thought these might have been distillery only released once upon a time and they're quite old bottles because uh, this was bottled in August 10th 2017 which is like six years ago now uh, and this was bottled in uh, it's, oh, July 18th, 2018 as well. So this is the American whiskey. So this is their batch one. And then this is the batch two as well. So I had them, they were both there. They were, they were the only two that they had there, but it was, it was just weird. They were like dusty as hell. Uh, one is a, I think they're both actually, the. Uh, they have, both have the same blends, but and they're both the same age as well. So they didn't leave the disc that age for an extra year. I guess they just had, to, this was the project. So it is uh, a blend of rye and bourbon whiskies, which includes selects, select barrels of house distilled rye it is a sour aged in new american oak with a portion rested in wine and pork barrels to create an ultra smooth american whiskey with notes of honey vanilla and caramel and that's the same for both of them there as well uh, like i said I, I paid i think it was like 69.99 i paid both for the castor and for edwards uh, i'm sure if they marked them up they might have been able to well even if they didn't mark them up, they wouldn't have been able to sell because they've been sitting there all this time. Sometimes you really have to, when you're in uh, like uh, cities in the middle of nowhere, you really have to stop in the hood and go to these stores where you're a little bit uneasy of where you're at because you'll find some gems and that's one of the keys to whiskey hunting. You're not always going to go to big stores, the big labels, like the big depot type stores because they already have their allocated programs and they already kind of reward their loyal customers, so they should. So the best part of the whiskey hunting is to get the decent bottles. You have to go to smaller stores, uh, like a store that maybe sells like a lot of tequila instead, or like a store that maybe sells a lot of beer, who kind of just have some of the older whiskeys that people generally don't go there to get, and then you might every so often be able to find a gem, which is what we found with these two and the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs. So we have three bottles left. So a big shout out to one of the supporters of the channel, and that is gonna be Robert. You might see him in the comments here on this one. So Robert very, very kindly sent me this High West Double Rye finished bottle. Thank you, Robert, and thank you to support in the channel. So this one is gonna be finished in a rum barrel as well. I haven't had the High West finished in a rum bar. I don't have it on the shelf here as well so really happy i was able to get this that's all i normally see in colorado for the most part it's like the oloroso one that always drops here i feel like every store has that oloroso all the peated scotch finish one so super happy for this I, i'm a really big fan of rum as well and maybe i need to get into maybe more like my rum finish whiskies the sagamore do a great job of that as well ABV on this is 49.4%. Like I said, it generally, they generally come in a little bit below 50. This is bottle number 28 and barrel number 24,694. This is from PA Fine Wine and Spirits. So again, thank you so much, Robert humbled and I appreciate it as well. Thank you for supporting the channel. So next up, we have two bottles left. And recently here um, in Colorado, or I should say as a store, Dave Co Wine and Liquor, they've had a couple of good drops with their single barrel whiskeys here. So they have, I, I, th I believe they have the most single barrel selections in Colorado. And they have a bunch of different stuff. They have like rum, uh, single barrels, they have tequila finished barrels. They have a bunch of totally different crazy stuff but every so often they do get some really awesome barrels in just the regular stuff that they have finished bourbons and whiskeys is great but this guy i was able to pick up for msrp it was 39.99 maybe a little bit higher than msrp but it was a single barrel select here as well so this is going to be barrel number 69 there you go uh, and much like the buffalo trace bourbons i think these are excellent value for money there's a little bit, there's not a rumor, but there's a little information that bounces around in the bourbon world is that Eagle Rare is pretty close to already being a single barrel. The only reason that they can't put single barrel on you is because that when they dump a barrel, rack it into bottles, there's still some residual left in the machine. So then it's not a true single barrel, but basically what you're getting, you're more or less getting a single barrel. So that's why maybe while you try just different Eagle Res, they don't have to be the single barrel, it's just different Eagle Res in general. There is probably gonna be subtle differences between the two. However, super happy to get this. Really great value for money, $40. Thank you so much, Davo. You can't go wrong. So then lastly, and the last bottle I have here, 
So I was really, really fortunate uh, that a local liquor store here in Denver, they do uh, monthly lottery drawings. So basically you can go there, you can maybe buy some whiskey, do all your regular liquor shopping, and you get to write your name on a piece of paper, you put it into a pot, and at the end of the month, during the, when they video live streams, they pull a name. Uh, so I got pulled, and what they like to do is keep up some of their really highly allocated whiskey bottles, and this is a really highly allocated whiskey bottle. So they have some crazy stuff that they put in for the lotteries. There's only one bottle every month. I think the most recent one was a Van Winkle Rye, which is super rare. Uh, this bottle is rare, not that rare, but still very rare, and I'm very humbled to get it. And that is gonna be Old Fitzgerald 19. So the only other Old Fitz I've been able to get was the Old Fitz 9. Uh, which is all right. Uh, I thought it would be better if I'm completely honest. So we will, you know, we'll see how the 19 holds up here. So for this, I believe it was MSRP. I paid two hundred and forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents, or two hundred and sixty-nine out the door there. Um, this, like I said, 19-year-old whiskey coming in at 50% alcohol because all the old fits is are bottled in bond. Uh, this, as I said, aged 19 years and then bottled in the fall of 2020. And on, on the tax strip, it was the distill that was made in the fall of 2003. So, what can I say? You know, sometimes you get the luck of the Irish, and I think it must have been right around Patrick's Day actually when I got this, maybe a little bit earlier actually. So, super humbled. It would have been nice to get <laughs> got the Papi Wang Bing Kong Rye, but you know, look at this. This is just a beautiful bottle. Uh, get this cracked, maybe we'll get it on the channel. We'll maybe do a head to head to the nine year. So it'll be interesting to see how this is different from the other nine year, to see just how much that 10 extra years plays a part. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. We had a lot to get through. We had a lot of whiskey. I'm super fortunate that I'm able to A, get really damn lucky on the lotteries here in Colorado. Yes, I do spend a fair bit of money on whiskey. However, you still have to get lucky and get your name pulled. And when you're out there, guys, you're traveling and you have the possibility to go and hit up some stores, like I said earlier on, you know, it's not always easy to buy whiskey at every store, so I always try to do my best, but at least I'll have a conversation, try to have a conversation with the person there and kind of explain what I'm doing. And some people, like I've had, I've talked to shop owners before and I'm like, I'm just doing some whiskey hunting. And they're like, oh, uh, like I'm just saying I'm from out of state, you know, I'm just doing some whiskey hunting. And they're like, oh, I get it, I get it. Uh, how about this bottle, this store pick that we got? Or sometimes they'll say, you know, I have some of this in the back, you know, do you want to bring it out? So to have those conversations with shop owners, even if you're not buying anything just so it's just not like this ignorant you walk in walk out with blank type thing so hopefully you enjoyed today's video and as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time maybe this whiskey cheers